Hello Wanderers and welcome back to another CK3 roleplay episode following Clan Stiarna and we are going to be jumping right into the combat, right into the thick of the battle as we have invaded our neighbors to the south, have chased down their armies and are engaging for the first time in what should hopefully be a short campaign with a decisive victory here in the mountains of northern Spain. Now, as you can see, we are ready to face off against our opponent, and we shall no doubt find ourselves victory here. We are going up against Wali Garcia, the poet of Tafala, and he is not a, a particularly combat-focused man, but he does have skill in battle. No doubt this is from fighting many campaigns as you can see he is 42 years old he has probably fought a lot much more than chieftain satorthy himself however chieftain satorthy comes from a long lineage of great warriors so we shall see how this battle plays out we're going to slow down time so we can watch as this battle is engaged uh, as you can see, Prince Rashid ibn al-Mundir has joined his brother in this bat or in the war, but his troops will no doubt not arrive in time. And as you can see, we have the significant advantage here. Our Nordvina warriors are making swift work. Our champion Gretir wounded Wali Garcia, the enemy commander, and the battle here is turning easily in our favor. We have chased them down. We are, have them on the run. They will no doubt be begging for mercy at the hands of our Nordvina warriors. Our champion, Yadni, wounded Eneko. And with that, I think that will be this battle easily won and done. So there you go. As you can see, we have successfully conquered or defeated the enemy army at least, and will go on to successfully conquer their lands. They do appear to be retreating back to their own lands. Uh, we will be heading towards their capital to capture it. Uh, let us just take a look at the details of this battle. So as you can see, we gained a reasonable amount of fame, some devotion for fighting enemies of the Norse faith, and our war score has increased by 11. Uh, we took 60 losses versus their 228 losses. And they have just a handful of survivors. Uh, as for our champions, Gretir, of course, doing the most damage in the battle, uh, as he is a want to do. Um, getting 23 kills with his ret not just himself but with him and his uh, trusted warriors uh, Seymundir Yadni Valdemar Sitari Tilpo and Yakli El uh, all managing to get some uh, action in that battle versus the enemy warriors Bermudo Emir Lope of Navarra uh, they're Enemy commander was wounded, of course, as you can see, as was Eneko. So while it wasn't necessarily a decisive battle, they may be able to recover at least for one attempted counterattack. I think that that was a very handy victory and will probably set the tone for the rest of this war. I don't think that we're going to have a lot of difficulties defeating the rest of their armies here, particularly if they're retreating uh, back to Banbulana. Uh, probably pronounced that wrong, but oh yeah, they are. All right, so we're going to engage them one more time here in the as they defend their capital city here. They'll sally out to meet us with the rest of their army. Once again, Wali Garcia versus... Uh, Satorti. Uh, let us see how this battle takes place. This one may be the deciding battle of this war. So, as you can see, the phases of the battle engaging, and the enemy, our champion, wounded Nuno. And here we are, yes, easily, easily defeating the enemy here. 
Our champion Yadni was slain, however, by Emir Lope. Yadni, I do believe. Oh, he was one of our one of our greatest uh, champions. An old man, though, uh, dying in battle. An or no, old Nordvina warrior, dying in battle like that. I think that would be the way that he would want to go. Uh, he was slain by the Emir himself. Uh, probably trying to go out in a blaze of glory. Ah, but as you can see here, Gretir, our good friend and companion, slew the enemy comba commander, and now they are leaderless. Uh, the Emir probably trying to take over uh, the control of his army, but they're retreating. Half the army has already fled the field of battle, and they have no chance now of defeating these Nordvina warriors. So, well done on our friend, Grettir. Ah, uh, yes, as you can see here, the Emir takes over the troops himself, but he was wounded by one of our good champions. And that should be it. We should be able to finish most of their army here. Some of them retreating, but as you can see, uh, that was a handy victory. Take a quick look at the details here. Indeed, 175 killed to our 35 losses here. Uh, the Wali was slain in battle. He was a, like we said, he was a, an interesting warrior. He, and a man with an interesting life. He went on the Hajj, he was a poet, uh, but now he is dead. Uh, and as you can see, the enemy army is just in tatters. If they do even try to make any sort of comeback, they will no doubt fail. Grettir will no doubt need to be rewarded. However, his wife has died under mysterious circumstances. Very interesting. We did not notice that. Did something, did something terrible happen to his wife? Well, we'll have to find him a new spouse. Perhaps. Perhaps our sister? That would be interesting. Hmm. That would be uh, that would be interesting indeed. I wonder, could we reward our good friend with a with a marriage to our sister, or would we be playing the political game? I'm curious. Uh, I won't make that decision just yet, but I'm curious to see how that'll play out. So now we're just gonna siege down the enemy capital here. I'm gonna speed time up a little bit just to kind of let the siege play out. We don't have any siege weapons, so it's gonna take a little bit longer than usual. But with that, we should have no, no major issues here. Um, we will need to fill up the position of Marshal as Yadni was indeed our Marshal but I'm sure we have plenty of skilled candidates for that position. So as you can see here, the siege is progressing well, and we have almost, oh nice. Uh, Gretir has also increased the control in uh, Ipuskoa uh, by 20, which is pretty good, giving us a little bit more dominion over our own lands here. So as you can see here, we are about to finish up this siege and take the enemy capital. That should probably give us all the war score we need, especially considering we took our foe Malik Saad uh, hostage during the siege. And we captured his wife. So I believe we shall ransom his wife back for 100 gold. Yes, we will definitely, we will definitely take that money. And now we... Could we ransom him back? He won't have any money left. So we won't bother. Um, but we will... We will take these new lands for ourselves. Let us, let us enforce our demands on the Malik. We will gain fame. We will... And essentially just take the lands. So be it. So as you can see here, we now have Navara uh, ourselves, and it does appear like there's some construction going on. Oh yes, they're constructing a small 
hill fort for us. That was very generous of them. Uh, so there we go. We shall disband our armies. We can raise a runestone now. So here's a here's a kind of an interesting thing that I'm seeing with this campaign, and we've been talking about this quite a bit so far, um, of how. Uh, Satorthi views religion, and we're just going to pop in here, and we're just going to uh, change uh, change his pose, uh, so he's not just all angry like that all the time. Uh, what can we do here? Let us simply put him as honorable. There we go. So now he's just an honorable looking man there. So, uh, what, as I was saying, we've been talking about the religious aspect of Satorthi uh, for, for the last two episodes now. And I think that the majority of, uh, majority of us agree that Satorthi is probably not a particularly religious person. He, I don't think he necessarily holds to the Norse religion with particular fervor. He does still believe in it, but I think one interesting thing to point out, and I believe this was true of a lot of these ancient pagan religions, is that they don't necessarily see their gods as the only gods. They see the gods of all the different peoples, a lot of the time at least, as, as equally real, and they just worship their own as opposed to, say, in Catholicism or some of the other Christian denominations where they kind of deny the existence of the other, of the other gods. So to Seth Dorothy, uh, the Christian god may seem just as equally valid uh, as the ones that he worships himself. That's why I don't necessarily think that it is unlikely for him to potentially be considering changing his religion. But that brings me to the point here uh, with raising the runestone. I think that even though this is a... Um, probably does have some religious connections, I do believe that this would be more of a cultural um, type of event. So I think it makes perfect sense for us to create this runestone. We're going to gain a lot of piety. We're going to gain some prestige. Uh, we'll get some extra modifiers, which shall be pretty nice. So let us see how this goes. Every runestone tells a message of some significant event in the life of the commissioner, from the smallest peasant to a chieftain like myself. The stone records all. What shall this mon monument speak of? Perhaps to my vanquished foe, Malik Saad. Now that I have decided what to put on my runestone, the question remains where to place it. Memorials to victory, such as my triumph over the Malik, are a constant reminder of war's glorious end. They are best placed in areas that require encouragement to cooperate. Of course, one or two spots do come to mind. Uh, we shall indeed raise it in Navarra. That's going to increase our control growth there which will be good because our control is probably very, very low there. Uh, so before we start time again, we do need to choose our new marshal here. Uh, so what options do we have? Well, we have Mayor Luis of Tafala. He is a Muwaladi Basque man. Mm, I don't know if we could trust him. Manrique. Uh, the Catholic Basque man who has fought in our armies for quite some time and is very skilled. We could potentially have Gretir take over that job, though he is doing a pretty good job as our steward, and he, he is a little bit better at that. Should, could we trust a Basque man in charge of, in charge of our armies? I, I'm not entirely convinced because, so obviously this guy's the, the far better option uh, in terms of mechanics. I don't think our Nordvina warriors 
would accept being having this uh, Catholic Basque man as their leader. So let me see here. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is that we are going to make uh, Gretir our marshal. And we are going to make our steward Yakli El because he is already serving as our seneschal. And this character, this very, very interesting character here, is indeed a somebody we want to keep an eye on. So I think we are going to... He's an administrator. Very, very good at, at this job. So we're going to assign him that role. Uh, yeah, we still want to increase control in Ipuskoa. And uh, you are going to... Oh, a development. Do we want to promote culture? Yeah, I think we probably... How far are you to increase development? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have them promote culture, even though it's going to take away that increased development that we were working on there. I'm just going to forget about it otherwise. Uh, increasing control in Navarra seems like a pretty good idea. Uh, so that we can get the this kind of small little area that we have here uh, well in hand. So, yeah, that was pretty good. One thing that we are going to consider is that somebody did point out that our court physician, yeah, he sucks at his job. Do we have anybody who would be better? No. We could search for a physician. I am tempted to do so. Uh, I would like to have a, a new physician. And now, as you can see, we are illustrious. So we will be able to potentially take the duchy on the next go around. So that's pretty good. Uh, as you can see here, yes, our sister can marry. And we could marry her off to some... Norse rulers and such out there, but I wonder, you know, would we, so we here, we have our good friend Gretir, his wife died under mysterious circumstances, he has fought, he has served us very well, he slew the, the enemy commander in that last battle, giving us essentially the, the win over over our enemies there, could we reward our great uh, and honorable friend here with a marriage to our sister in return? I honestly think that we probably could. Now the question is, do we want to have them of, uh, of our dynasty? He would still accept that the children would be of House Stiarna. Uh, I think that he might... No, you know what? We will... He can continue his own lineage here, but they will be essentially... Uh, his children will be potentially cousins of ours. And they'll have a very good chance of getting some good traits. You know what? I am willing to allow Gretir the honor of marrying our sister for the great service that he has done for us and hopefully we will find a, a chance to give him some land uh, as well now we have a chance here for our to find a court physician uh, we could find have this muwaladi woman here or this one here i mean she is a renowned physician I believe oh, it would cost us 200 prestige because we already have one. But she would be... But she would be much better. I think we're going to take that prestige hit. Uh, because having a good physician is going to be very helpful. She's a gardener as well. It's just... We need to be able to take care of our health. That's very important, everyone. Take care of your health. Sweet no... Yorun. 
What a dream. Excited, I leap out of my bed to share its contents with someone, anyone. I see one of my thralls still embraced by slumber on the earthen floor of my longhouse. I nudge him with my foot and he rises, now standing and attentive. Except I have forgotten what had happened in my dream. I stumble over my words, struggling to recall any detail. Why is it too often too easy to forget what happens in the world of dreams? Loki, he even he steals even my dreams. Oh well. Hmm, I must remember. Why can't I? Well, I do believe that we are stubborn. So we will we will try to remember a dream. And we do. We do remember what the dream was about. And we gain 10 prestige. I imagine that this was a dream about our recent victory, our recent success here. And perhaps what the future will hold for us. So yeah, we will just kind of let time go a little bit uh, here. We'll keep an eye on what our enemy's situations are. This guy has so many alliances. I do really not want to fight that guy right now. This guy is going to be the Malik. Uh, he will probably be our prime target for now. But I think while we have very little to do, we could go on a pilgrimage. And I am, uh, I'm curious about that, but I don't know if we are going to, if we're gonna, you know what, I'm actually, I will, we will do this. We are going to go on a pilgrimage, even though we're not particularly religious, we do believe in the Norse God. So let's go on the journey and we'll see what the journey has to, to show for us. Uh, we could go to Kiev. You know, I think we're gonna go to Nidoros. Definitely pronouncing that wrong. This is a very long pilgrimage. We're going to go back to Scandinavia and see what the gods have to tell us. This could change the dynamics of some of this campaign a little bit, depending on what events happen. So, let us see what our pilgrimage has in store. It seems I have not taken well to all this travel. Perhaps it is the strange lands filled with unfamiliar air, or perhaps my furs are not warm enough. Either way, my cough has been persistent for weeks. This morning, I could barely muster the strength to get out of bed. Do I even have the strength to continue onwards? Well, obviously, we are stubborn. <laughs> So we are going to continue. Good thing we have a new physician who hopefully we brought with us on this journey uh, to take care of us here. So we're, we're definitely just sailing all the way up here to Scandinavia, I think. Uh, this one is in Sweden, the one where we're going. Oh, interesting. I wake to the noise of chaos in the camp, but it only takes me a few moments to realize what is happening. We are under attack. Bandits are swarming our tents and wagons while our guards do what they can to resist. We are obviously going to pick up our sword and fight them, even though we are currently ill. Uh, we will we will definitely go and fight. So we're sick. We probably got like dysentery or something like that. And we pick up our sword and we, even though we are just hor horrifically ill, we manage to fight off the bandits ourselves. Um, and that is pretty impressive here. So we finally arrive in the great temple as the Hofgothi offers me blessings. I reflect on everything that has happened to bring me here, even though we have, um, come here. So I think here's an interesting, okay. So here's how I see it. We've gone on this long pilgrimage to, to go and, and speak with the gods, to see what the gods have to say for us. We go, we get ill, uh, a, whore, a bad omen right off the bat. We, we spend the whole trip sick and ill. Then we're attacked by bandits, bloodshed along the journey. And now we arrive here and I think it's, I don't think it's a particularly special feeling that we find here as we find ourselves just horrifically ill, we wander into the temple. I don't think this would be a deeply spiritual experience f 
for Satorthy. I think we're going to return home and be somewhat unimpressed. And I do believe that this is going to continue to add to the feelings of disenchantment with the Norse faith that have been building here. My journey is a long one. Uh, while much remains the same, something has changed in how the religious people treat me. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, we have undergone the journey of a holy man, and they insist that it's changed something about me, whether I can see it for myself or not. So, as you can see, it doesn't seem like Satorthy really feels like that was a particularly religious experience for him. The... The people there see him differently, but he himself does not. So, uh, yeah, I think that will contribute to to us potentially going on to going on to seeing seeing what other faiths have to offer here. So, we are going to have our wife raise our daughter because she is very skilled. And there we go. So, we are going to simply let some time pass here. We don't have very many possible decisions. We could go on a raid, which I think, you know, maybe we might as well go on a raid here. What kind of targets do we have here? We could go and raid Nant, uh, which I think actually doesn't sound like a bad idea. There's potential raiding opportunities here in France. Could we go and raid uh, Paris? Well, it's under control already, but it's not uh, impossible that we could do that. So here we go. I'm going to switch, of course, uh, over to us as the commander of the armies. And oh, there are some raiders coming in here already. Are they going to get here before we do? The 9th of June. Oh, when are they? When are these people getting here? Let's see if we... Do we get here first? Who is... Who's the leader of this raid? It is not us, unfortunately. Well, that's unfortunate. But uh, I think then that we will simply go further into France. And we will attempt to raid some of these lands down the river here. Uh, which river is this? The Loire. So let us continue our raid. We'll take this barony. We'll take this barony. Maybe some churches. Raid or trade? A truce with the ruling king could be invaluable. Huh. A truce with the French king. Oh my gosh, his wife is... is imprisoned again. She's been having a real bad time, that woman, unfortunately. Uh, so as we prepare to sack these lands, we could potentially get, um, we could potentially get a, a trading opportunity. No, I think we're probably just going to continue to raid. I don't think we have, we don't hold much stock for this French king. He can't even protect his wife. Uh, we, he's, he's fighting in so many wars. He's just, he is not a man with whom we have any interest in dealing with. We are no longer sick. That is very fortunate. So we're going to just speed up time here so these raids go a little bit faster. If we get any, any interesting events, that will be cool. But uh, mostly we're just trying to get, get some loot and load up our army full of gold. So there we go. We have captured this young woman here. Uh, we can't ransom her. No, he will not accept. Who is not? She is a noble woman, but she is not particularly noble. Where else could we go to potentially get some good loot? Vendome. Uh, that actually seems like. Oh, well, we're starting to get into territory where we're going to be. Suffering from some attrition, which I don't really care for particularly. I do not want to lose troops for no reason here. Uh, we're going to take a new 
martial lifestyle, friendly fatal casualties, and advantage. Yeah, we are going to go down this more warlike path down here rather than the courtship type path. We may go down that eventually, but for now we just want to be strong, uh, powerful warriors. Looks like some enemy armies are coming in, but they are not hostile to us. Ah, here we go. The settlement of Tours, an important stronghold in Greater Torre, has fallen to my raiders. We have uh, the run of vast tracts of land and many of the quivering subjects and shining treasures of Countess Berta to choose from. My, the troops stand ready, awaiting my command to give them directured direction. Captured slaves, bounteous plunder. Uh, I think we want to... I think we're going to bring some slaves back to Irun. Uh, because that will probably be the most advantageous to us here. And we're probably going to finish with this last raid um, right here. Dusk at the market. I rushed to the local market as the sun was setting, hoping to buy something I really wanted. But the merchant told me he had run all out of that product. It will be a long time before I can acquire more of it. If I were to pay him a lot of money, he won't be able to get it to me. He's trying to trick me. At least he's honest. Hmm. I don't think we want to pay a lot of money. We are just. I think I think this, at least he's honest. I think that seems like the most Satorthy option. So even though we are not full on raid loot, I think we have plenty for this raid. And we are going to return home. Bring our slaves back. Irun is got its development is slowly increasing we're building ourselves a nice little country here and then we find out that our wife is pregnant uh apparently the night before we left on this raid uh Stierkar, or i mean satorthy and his wife spent a little bit of time together and we return home with all of these riches all of these slaves for our for our uh little realm here and we find out that our wife is pregnant now that is <laughs> probably a pretty nice thing to come home to i would imagine so let us see will we have a, a young son uh to to call our own here an heir to our throne one day we shall see and as you can see here, after lots of hard work, I have finally learned the French language, endless hours of practicing accentuation, sleepless nights mimicking inflection, countless lessons mastering intonation. It was all worth it in the end. During my efforts, I looked to emulate King Simon's accent. I'm sure he would be impressed with my results. And of course, French peasants now respect me a great deal more. Should we send a letter to our cousin? Or do we just feel accomplished? Uh, I think that we should... I think we're going to try to send a letter. Unfortunately, it comes across as dishonest mockery. That is uh, terribly unfortunate. Our cousin does not seem to care for us particularly here. Even though we do speak the the French language now, uh, but I think he still does not trust us. I think he he suspects something strange. He probably he probably may not even believe that we are really his his uncle, really uh, slash cousin slash brother in law. So, uh, you know, geez, <laughs> familial ties back in the medieval times. But yeah, I think that he doesn't necessarily trust us just yet. Our wife is looking rather, rather pregnant here. Uh, and we shall see uh, what child we have here. Will it be a son? Will it be a daughter? I think that we will be happy with either or. And and I am mostly concerned with with what is going to be going on in kind of our next step. And our next step here is to name our son with a tired yet blissful smile. Oneka presents me with a perfect little son. One day, child, you will carry on my le legacy. 
what name would befit a chieftain? Well, it's suggesting steer car. Do we want to have another steer car? Potentially. Potentially we could name our stun after our father. What other options do we have? An Echo, Fortune, Garcia. Uh, I think... I actually don't mind naming our son after our father. Uh, our daughter named after our mother, our son named after our father. I think that that is very, very wise and a very, very honorable thing to do. But now the big question remains. We have learned the French language. We have tried to make ties with the realm to the north, to Aquitaine. Our wife, a beautiful and, and honorable and loving woman of the Catholic faith here, who has been at our side for these last 10 years. Is that enough to convince us to go over to the Catholic religion? I honestly think that over these last 10 years, Satorthy has gone through a lot. He has, he has come to this land to try to find a place among his mother's people, to find his, his own heritage, his own destiny. And he has become disenfranchised, disenfranchised with the Norse religion. He is seeking to make ties with the realms surrounding him. He is, he is looking to become a person of these lands. And I think that with that comes our conversion to the Catholic faith. And there, as you can see, with my decision to convert to Catholicism, I arrange for a priest to come to my court and conduct the rite. With the fate of my immortal soul in question, I can only pray that I have made the right decision. Metaphysic aside, my most immediate concern is temporal. With most of my vassals following a different fate, will I be able to keep my realm united against internal rebellions and foreign opportunists alike? Glory to God. Or, uh, as you can see here, we have a very skilled Nordvina Catholic cleric here, Skjolder. And we shall bring him to our court, and we shall make him our our bishop, I suppose. Or not our bishop, but certainly a, a learned man in our court. Unfortunately, we can't switch him out there. And so there you go. We are now Catholic. And with that will come a lot of changes with the way that we approach this game. But those changes will come in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you then.